for. My prayer is that in your journey returning home, you will get back safely in Jesus' name. The weather may not look friendly, but because of the favor of God upon you, nothing shall by any means hurt you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My prayer is that for the fact that you've made sacrifice to be here today, God will do everything possible this year in your favor in Jesus' name. Let us pray. King of glory, we present ourselves. We thank you for every one of us here and those who are not even here. We appreciate you, God, because of the love that you have placed in our heart for you. I pray, O oh God, that as we, O oh God, go into the second of, have witnessed the second Sunday of this year, we pray that you continue to move us higher in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, as we consider your word, we're praying that, Lord, the entrance of your word will bless us. We pray that the entrance of your word will lift us up. Because we're going to cooperate. We're going to walk with you. We're going to, Lord God, take in your word with the mindset of obedience. And we're trusting, O oh God, that as we position ourselves with the attitude of obedience, we pray that, Father, you position us, O oh God, for flights in every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we read from verse 1. And the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. Look at that word, gather thee. The Lord will gather you. The Lord will cause things to come together for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is our year of supernatural breakthrough. And that's why the whole church is waiting upon the Lord. I can tell you for the rest of this year, there's going to be flight for you. There's going to be not just ordinary flight, a safe flight for you. In the name and a safe landing for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord thy God, verse 5, will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. And thou shalt possess it. I said, thou shalt possess it. I, let me put it that for myself. I will possess it. If you are defeated within, then you cannot be a victor without. You have to possess it by faith. You have to be strong within. You have to declare the declarations of faith. I will possess it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And thou, and says, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers we sing for that abraham's blessings are mine see i want to be better than abraham i want to be more prosperous than abraham i want to be more expanded than abraham spiritually physically in every aspect of my life i don't want to be at that level where Abraham was, and I am a believer of, of the word of God. The Bible says here, if you believe God, he will do it for you. All things are possible to them that do what? To them that believe. It says here, let me repeat it again to your hearing. And verse 5, the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. I said, thou shalt possess it. And God will do thee good and multiply thee above what? Above thy fathers. That's the conclusion of the matter. Above thy fathers. You, where your father could not get to, you will get there in the name of Jesus Christ. Where your ancestors could not get to, you will get there in the name of Jesus Christ. And for the fact that you are here in America, you know, many of our fathers couldn't make it here. For the fact that you are here in America is a testimony. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. To be in the number one country in the world where decisions are taken politically and economically, economically and it sends shivers around the world. And not only that, for you to be in Washington, D.C. Somebody say Washington, D.C. 
That is why we don't close the church down in Washington, D.C. Because this is a stronghold. Don't you never say this is a stronghold here. If there's one person here, two people here, we will gather in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with, and that thou mayest live. If, if, see, if there should be the number one prayer in our hearts, it is God will circumcise the heart of our children. This is the greatest blessing that can come to them. Because when they are circumcised to love God, every blessing you command on them will stick to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. And God will circumcise the hearts of our children. Our children will not depart from the faith. Our children will be truly converted. They will experience true conversions in their life. Our children will walk with God. Our children will not be hidden. Our children will not be anti-Christ. Our children will not be haters of the word of God. Our children will embrace the totality of God's word in their life. And it will be well with them. I say it will be well with them. In the name of Jesus, verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon... <laughs> not upon me. Upon who? Upon who? Upon thy enemies. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and do what? And obey the voice of the Lord. And do all his commandments, which I commanded this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every walk of thy hand. Let this be a covenant service here today. Let this be a covenant making service and say, God, I am a child of God. And Lord, I, the covenant I have with you, highlight it again in my life. You said, oh God, you will make me plenteous. I want you to read verse 9 to yourself. Say, personalize it. Let's read together after the count of two, one, two. And the Lord thy God will make me plenteous in every walk of my hand, and in the fruit of my body, and in the fruit of my cattle, and in the fruit of my land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over who? Over me. The Lord, I want you to repeat that God will rejoice over me. God will rejoice over me. I want you to declare that by faith. Say, God will rejoice over me. This is not a year of lamentation, I declare to you. This is not a year of weeping. Because you overcome every temptation. You overcome every trial. And God will look at you. And God will rejoice over you. Not only that, hear me this day. God will rejoice over your children. I say, God will rejoice over your children because you and your children are for signs and wonders. I can't hear an amen here today. I can't hear an amen here today. We are for signs and wonders in this country. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is not done with me yet. God is not done with my family yet. He is just beginning with me. He is just starting with me. Don't you say, God is just starting with you. You will see where God is going to take us to this year. He's taking us to high places. He's taking us to excellent places. You will feast with kings. You will dwell on the same table with important people. God is going to lift somebody up here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because of what we're considering here today. You're asking what is the topic? I've not even said the topic yet. You know, but I just needed to say this because... To, I want to key us into what God wants to, to say to us. I want us to position ourselves, you know, into what God wants to say to us this morning. Because another man's shipwreck can become a beacon of light for you. Can become a stepping stone. If people, some people in the scriptures experienced shipwreck of their faith, the backslided, you read of Judas, you read of Achan, you read of uh, Demas and the rest. Must you go through the same route? You can learn from it. You can be a better Christian. If Judas was with Jesus and betrayed Jesus, you don't have to betray Jesus again. If Peter denied Christ, you don't have to deny Christ again. So another man's shipwreck can become a beacon to you. A beacon to me. An example for me 
not to repeat the same mistakes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's why Moses is exhorting the people here in the scriptures. He's exhorting the people to obedience to God. He said, obey God, it's a condition for restoration. Obey God, it's a condition for getting blessed by God. Just obey God. We're considering true conversion and obedient walk with God. Everybody say that together. True conversion and obedient walk with God. Don't just read about the failures and successes of people in the Bible without applying the respective principles that are embedded in those, uh, those lessons to your own personal life. And so this morning, as we consider this subject, I pray you assimilate it. I pray you take it in. I pray you apply it to your life, and it will be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 17. The word of God says, but if thy heart turn away, so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Verse 18, the Lord says, I will denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. That will not be my portion. And that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Verse 19, everybody. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, what? Choose life. I choose life today. That both thou and thy seed may what? May live. We will live in Jesus' name. Verse 20, everybody. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest do what? Obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. God is our life. The economy is not our life. See, whether there is downturn in the economy, it is not our life. God is our life. My economy is with heaven. Men may say there's a casting down. I will declare there's a lifting up for me. Because God is my life. Now, I confidently declare that to you yourself this morning. Say, God is my life. Do you really mean it? Do you mean it? Say, God is my life. He is my life. He is my life. That's why no demon, no principality can take your life from you. Because you are a covenant child. That's why no, I don't care the, the cohorts of the kingdom of darkness. They can gang up. The Lord will lift up a standard against them. Because God is your life. I want to declare that again confidently this morning. God is my life. That's why I will not die, but I will live to declare the good works of this God. This year, 2019, hear me, hear me, because you've got ears to hear. 2019 will not be my mortuary in the name of Jesus Christ. The year 2019 will not be my burying year in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I will live to declare. Because I will, I will walk with God. And that's what we hear this morning. You're not genuinely converted. Repent and be converted. Turn your life over to God. And he will do you good. The world is full of deceptions. The world is full of counterfeits. And it's everywhere. We find it everywhere. Daily. Counterfeit. Counterfeit food. Counterfeit products. Counterfeit drugs, counterfeit water, counterfeit what else? So many counterfeits. Because they are counterfeit also, it means that they're genuine. They're genuine products. And you can look at how men operate. If men can come up with ways of testing or testing counterfeits, if they can come up with ways of Making us realize what is not right, what you should avoid by way of labels, by tags, by warnings, by procedures and standards. Why do you think God will tolerate counterfeit conversion? Why do you think God will tolerate adulterated Christian life? God wants the real thing from his children. He wants a real salvation experience from his children. He wants a real holiness from his children. He wants a real Holy Spirit upon. He wants the infilling of his spirit 
upon his children. If men are able to distinguish between real and fake, God does much more. If men hate counterfeits, do you think God will like counterfeits? No wonder Jesus showered woes on the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You pretend to be what you are not. I will not be a hypocrite. Remember I told you the shipwreck of others can become a beacon of hope for you. God hates counterfeits. Say that to yourself, God hates counterfeits. They profess what they were not. God's intention is not for anyone to suffer loss at the end of life on earth. In spiritual and eternal things, it is disastrous to pretend to be real when it's not so. I will be real. I will be genuine in my Christian life. You know, in the matters that concern the inner man, in the walk of the Holy Spirit upon the soul, do you know the devil is so skillful at deception? He will imitate repentance. He will generate things that look like repentance and infuse that into people and make them think they're genuinely repented. That's why you find people, they have remorse, but they're not genuinely saved. The devil will generate naivety in place of faith. That's why we should be careful. He will mimic assurance of salvation by generating presumption, presumption scenes. God understands. Has God said, you should not eat of the fruit? Don't mind God. He will do anything possible to make you counterfeit. To disqualify you before God. I will not be disqualified. I refuse to be disqualified. You know, today as we pray, I want to tell the line of our pastor who ministered last Friday. He said, learn to say no. You know, not just the word N-O. You know, as he was saying that no, I could see the intensity of that no. The word no, from low intensity to medium intensity to high intensity. At some point, he said, no, resist the devil. The word no sent a strong lesson into my life. Just N-O, ever say N-O. N-O represents what? He said, can you say no without saying no? Many of us didn't get it. Can you say no without saying I just said it. I can't say no without saying no. I couldn't say no right now without saying no, right? No. This year you must learn to refuse counterfeit. Counterfeit things in your life. Counterfeit, uh, you know, infusions of the kingdom of darkness. And that's the way you're going to shine. I pray the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus. Do you know the devil will generate? He will generate things. He will generate pleasure. The pleasure of this world instead of the joy of the Lord. And people are, are in pleasure. They think it's the joy of salvation. They think they are truly saved. No, salvation is different from prosperity. Salvation is different from having many houses. Salvation is different from having a Bentley and a limousine. If you ride a Bentley, you ride a limousine, you will enjoy those things. It's so good. It feels so cool. Some of us had to. Our cars were struggling as we made it through the snow here today. But I know some of you that have trucks, uh, it's like uh, you just uh, maneuver through that thing. Some of our vans were just rolling the tire. And uh, if you have a small car, if you have a prayer, those cars are not so good for the snow. No, if you have those good things, you enjoy. But that enjoyment is different from salvation experience. Can I hear the amen in the house? And that's why you have to be very careful that the devil does not infuse self-confidence in place of simple confidence in the Most High God. Counterfeit. Everybody say counterfeit. 
you must have the real experience. You must have the real attributes of, of having a relationship with God. The real Christian virtues and nothing less than that. And that's why God is calling us this year, if you will walk with me, if you will be obedient, I will make the best out of your life. I'm not going to give the devil an opportunity to override you in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, examine yourself whether you be in in faith what does the bible say after that prove prove what does the word prove mean check yourself conduct a litmus test check your attitude check the way you talk check the way you use your senses check prove your own selves Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in who? In you. Except ye be reprobate. I will not be a reprobate in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, I pray that this year, you know, the power of God will be so mighty that there will be salvation in the house of God. Perhaps upon Mount Zion, there will be deliverance. And the enemy that will not let you go, that follows you to the very house of God, the presence of God will make the enemy unbearable. It will make, sorry, it will make the enemy unable to bear the power of God and they will leave you alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 18 verse 3. And the Lord said here, Verily I say unto you, except ye be what? Converted. And become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. We're dealing with the subject, true conversion and obedient walk with God. So except you be converted and become humble, become so simple, simple confidence in God, simple faith in God, simple walk with God. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Yes, sir. I don't understand where you're leading me to. Abraham, get out from your comfort. Yes, sir. I will go. Leave your, leave your family. Leave your background. Leave your domain and go to a place you don't even know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is looking for that simple faith. Simple confidence in the Most High God. He is looking for that, you know, that humility within. So except you be converted. Converted from darkness to light. Conversion cannot come without repentance from sin, renouncing sin. So except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. True conversion is absolutely necessary for the soul to be saved. It is by conversion that a man turns from sin to righteousness. It is by conversion that a man turns from self to Christ. It is by conversion that a man turns from the world to heaven. It is by conversion that a man turns from rebellion to obedience. It is by conversion that a man turns from, of course, from the negatives of the world to the positives with God. Like, except you be converted. Converted from your old ways to God's way. Converted from the practice of the society to kingdom life. It's except you be converted. Ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. We look at the first point. True conversion. The key that opens the door for escape from the depravity of sin. Our pastor during the uh, doctrines this morning uh, ministered to, of course, he went through you know, the depravity of man. He talked about that already. I'll just highlight that as we, as we move on again. I do want us to understand this morning that scripture is calling us, you and me, to understand what? That mere confession without turning away from sin is not repentance. Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. Exodus chapter 9. We read from verse 27. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. You can imagine Herod, uh, 
Pharaoh said he actually, that he has what? Pharaoh understood that he was a sinner. But did that make him, was that genuine conversion? Well, was that true conversion? No, he just felt sorry for, he knew he was sinning. He was fighting God's people. He was oppressing God's people. He was disobedient to the commands of God. He said, I have seen this time. And he even said with his mouth, the Lord is righteous. This was a heathen king. He said, the Lord is righteous. And I and my people are wicked. That's why the devil will continue to be defeated over you. He will be defeated over and over and over. If you remain on the lost side, I can tell you that you will be a victor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, the Lord is righteous. And I and my people are wicked. Then he says, verse 28, entreat the Lord. For it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail. May God thunder your enemies this year. They didn't say anything. I know you're a very loving Christian. I'm not talking about your neighbor, the one that you can see and feel, the one in flesh and blood. I said, may God thunder your enemies this year in the mighty name of Jesus. The gates of hell will receive thunder this year. Amen. Pastor, why are you cursing? I'm not cursing any human. I'm, see, the Lord, see. The word of God declares it. The enemy that will not let your children go free. Moses said, we'll go with our young and with our old. We'll not leave in our cattle. We'll go with everything that belongs to us. No. I say no to the king of Pesha. No to the kingdom of darkness. No to Pharaoh. No to Nebuchadnezzar. No to Herod. No. Our children will serve God. He said, entreat the Lord. For it is enough and that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. Verse 29, everybody. As soon as I'm gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord. This year... They, your enemy will know that the earth is the Lord's. The devil will know that the earth is the Lord's over your life. And uh, your possessions that he's lawfully taking from you because you gave him legal ground, you will go back and take them back. I will take them back. Every inch that I lost because of carelessness, I will take them back. Every ground in the area of spirituality, in the area of prayer, in the area of evangelism, in the area of soul winning, in the area of prosperity, in the area of health. Every ground that I lost yesteryears, I will take them back. I will take them back. We will take them back. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So we see here the gimmicks of Pharaoh. He wasn't truly saved. He wasn't truly converted. He knew God is righteous. And so are many people in the society today. They know that our God is great. They know that our God is mighty. They know that our God can save. They know that, you know what? Our God can save and addict to drug and make that person a Moses. Our God can deliver a prostitute and make the prostitute a preacher of the gospel. Our God can liberate a drunkard and fill the person with his spirit and he becomes drunk in the Holy Spirit. Our God can turn night to day. There's nothing, Lord, let's not exercise any form of doubt at what our God can do. Pharaoh said, I know, your God is righteous. I know that. I know that your God, we are wicked. And this year, I pray God's glory will be seen in our lives. I say, I pray God's glory will be seen all over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 34. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were seized, he sinned yet more. And hardened his heart, he and his servants. I plead with you here today. The grace of God is available to turn you away from sin. Don't harden your heart. Don't multiply sin. Give up. Hands up. Surrender your life to Christ. And save yourself from the troubles of tomorrow. And God will have mercy upon you in the name of Jesus.
Will you continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Turn from sin, from your wickedness. Remember I told you the shipwreck of people we read about in the Bible, like Pharaoh. The Bible says here that Pharaoh continued to, he hardened and will not let the children of God to go free. He hardened and sinned yet more. There is not going to be any more sacrifice. Jesus is not going to die again. He died once and for, for all. And that blood is powerful. That blood is effective to cleanse any sin and remove any iniquity from any man. All you need to do is what? Surrender yourself. Other youths, the society, see, you are the first youth to leave. You will not be the last youth to leave if Jesus tarries. Youth, you become an old man. But remember your creator in the days of your youth. When old age has not come, start laying godly foundations for yourself so that it may be well for you so that the blessings of God can become your portion God said to them Moses if you want to leave because God will be your life hacking to his voice hacking to his commandments Pharaoh did not true conversion the key that opens the door for escape for the privilege of sin for the consequence of sin from death from damnation. Does your repentance and confession make you to hate sin? Does your confession and repentance make you to renounce it to the extent that you do not want to go back to them? Saul in the Bible confessed but did not turn away from his sins just like Pharaoh. Look at 1 Samuel 28 verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. I pray your repentance will make you to turn away from every other alternative. We have only one God. He is a God of creation. Don't turn to creation. Don't turn to the creatures of God. Stop turning to man. Stop, stop turning to gods, small gods, little gods that are dead. Gods that cannot help you. Do not turn to familiar spirit. Do not turn to the magical people out there, to astronomers out there. Do not turn to sorcerers. Do not turn to man, for the help of man is vain. I will set my eyes on the hill. From whence come my help? Stop turning to your husband as if, as if it's your salvation. Stop turning to your wife as if your wife is a solution to the, to, to the issues of the family. Turn to who everyone I say? Turn to God. Stop turning to your parents as if they have the final say over your life. Turn to God. For God is your life. I say God is your life. I say, God, it's your life. And he will be your life indeed. In Jesus' name. True repentance is indispensable for deliverance from the backlog of sin. You know, in the beginning, God created man in his own image. And God said, be fruitful and multiply. But you know, someone said that, if you look at it, that was actually what happened. That it was after Adam and Eve fell to sin that they actually began to reproduce and have children. And so in sin, they reproduced. And so Adam and Eve have passed on that nature of sin to humanity. And that's why we talk about Adamic nature. In sin did my mother conceive me. In sin, humanity is conceived. Adamic nature. Every Adamic nature in your life I pray that God will separate you from them in the name of Jesus Christ. You go back to the very first plan of God. God said be fruitful and multiply. Created in the image of God. What is the image of God? 
the image of righteousness. Ever say righteousness. The image of holiness. Ever say holiness. The image of purity. Ever say purity. The image of power. You know, forget about dominance. Forget about prosperity in the will of God. Forget about being in charge. In charge of the atmosphere. In charge of creation. Forget about being in charge of the things that are in the firmament. If you don't get restored to the very image of God, it's the image of authority. Where God said, let there be light, and there was light. Where God said, let there be this, and there was that. Don't think about that, except you are truly converted and restored to the very image of God. And that's why God is calling us to come out of religion without repentance, to come out of you know, to religion without reconciliation with God. God is calling you and me to a distinctive life, distinctive character of righteousness. Come out from among them and be separate. For what? God called his people out of among the heathens to be distinct, to be holy, to be righteous. And you will be I will be in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. Matthew chapter 3. We we'll look at verse 7. The Bible says there, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Verse 8, everybody says, Bring forth therefore fruits. Meet for what? For repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to raise up children, or able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Verse 10. And now also, read together everybody. And now also the axe is laid on the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And I pray that this year you'll not be cast into the fire. You'll not be hewn down in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. The Bible says here that every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is what? is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, everybody. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. You know, this call to true repentance, the call of God, true conversion, is a key that opens the door for escape from the privity of sin. It is indispensable for deliverance from the privity of sin. You know, this true, this call of God is a divine call. That requires turning away from your affections, from the wall to the living God. You know, turning away from sin and shortcomings to the grace of God. God is calling us to be real. To be real to the extent that we renounce the world and renounce sin and the fashion of the world and the, the pattern of the world, the ideology of the world. God is calling you and me to forsake all and follow him. God is calling us to a life that is sincere. In appreciation of God. The Holy Spirit then gives us witness within our heart. The assurance of forgiveness of sin. When you respond to that call by faith, the assurance of salvation will be yours. In Jesus' name. This call is a distinctive call. It's, in fact, it's a call that actually gives you, it, uh, it permits you to exhibit by the grace of God to manifest distinct character of righteousness and uh, that's what the Bible says in Colossians, First uh, Corinthians 15, verse 34. The Bible says, awake, awake to righteousness and do what? And sin no more. You know, one who is dead in sin cannot awake in righteousness. An unsaved person cannot awake, you know, to righteousness. It is in Christ Jesus that you are alive and you can awake to righteousness. And that's why he said to the woman, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. I pray the Lord will give you the grace to go and sin no more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, in Revelation 2 verse 5, it says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Everybody say repent. 
I would say, remember from where you've fallen and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Because the scripture, and that's why the scripture says that if anyone is in Christ, you're just a new creature, all things are passed away. You know, it's important if you're going to be blessed of God and blessed by God. I declare that this year, by the grace of God, all things will be new for you in your life. Your life will be new. Your heart will be new. The Lord will bless the works of your heart in Jesus' name. We look at the second point, total obedience, the key to walking with God in a contemporary world. Total obedience is the key. Bearing obedience brings blessings. However, obedience must come with all, regardless of the cost, at all costs. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Total obedience, the key to walking with God this year. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I know you know this verse very well, but I still want you to turn to Joshua 1, verse 8, and pay attention to the details that are there. Let's read together, everybody. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of whose mouth? My mouth. But I will meditate therein. Say that for yourself. Meditate therein, day and night, so that I will observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then I will, my way will be prosperous and I will have good success. You will have good success this year. Your way will be prosperous this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When we talk of total obedience, it has to be personal. Personal obedience to the Lord. It has to be what? Personal obedience. We're talking about community type of obedience. Where if others are not doing it, then you, what? Don't follow God. Or if others are going this way, if others are saying yes, even though it's not God's will, you also say yes. We're not, we're not talking about that. Or perhaps the obedience that it's only when the congregation is saying yes that you say yes. No, God is calling you and me to a life of personal obedience to God. Ever say personal obedience. Personal obedience. I pray you'll be obedient to God in Jesus' name. Hebrews 11 verse 8 says, By faith. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he did what? He obeyed and he went out, not knowing whither he went. He did not allow the influence of his family to change his mind and decisions. Abraham did not inf- allow the influence of a society, the paganistic society that he was living in that time, to change his attitude towards God. The Bible says, by what? By faith. He did what? He obeyed God. Abraham, when he was called, who called Abraham? God called Abraham. And uh, by faith, he obeyed God. You will obey God as well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, that's why the Bible tells us that if we be willing and obedient, we will do what? We will eat the good of the land. You will eat the good of the land this year. You will not come short of God's expectation for you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn. And to the holy, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. The Bible is telling you and me this year to hearken unto the Lord. He says, ye that follow righteousness, seek the Lord. This year, I will seek the Lord. My family will seek the Lord. He said, look unto the rock. Look. Look unto the rock. Turn to your neighbor and say, look unto the rock. This year, I encourage you, brother. This year, I encourage you, sister. Make sure you're talking to somebody beside you. Sister, brother, this year, look unto the rock. From whence you are hewn. 
and to the hole of the pit from whence ye are digged. He says, look unto Abraham your father, unto Sarah that bore you. For I called him alone, personal obedience, and blessed him. God will bless you this year. And God said, I increased him. Is anybody here in the house looking for an increase this year? You know, many uh, people, employees are looking for a dollar raise, one dollar raise. And you know, one dollar raise at times when you, tr that translates, a dollar per hour translates to uh, many weeks of, you add a multi multiply that by uh, uh, many hours in the day and uh, many uh, days in the week and many weeks of the month and many months of the year. That's why government employees, when they get a dollar raise, they are very excited. You go out there and see, uh, Many government employees actually uh, doing odd jobs just to survive because of government shutdown at this time. And, uh, and you know, it's like uh, this society, uh, people, it's like uh, running from pillar to post, people eating from hand to mouth. One month of no income is like you can be on the street. You need God to be your life if you're going to survive in this society. You uh, get sick for one month, sick for two months. You can't pay your bills except God prospers you to an extent where you can. You can actually go on vacation for missions and don't and care less about what happens. I pray, God said, I increase Abraham. You know, when I look at the story of Abraham, when things were not going on well with Abraham, Abraham decided to go down to Egypt. And in Egypt, there were problems. You will not go down to Egypt this year because your economy is not in Egypt in the mighty name of Jesus. Going down to Egypt can translate to compromise. And in Egypt, Abraham told lies. Ah, my wife is my sister, is not my, uh, my, my wife. Just, he said, they will kill me if they get to know that, you know, you are my wife. Because you're very fair. And, you know, trouble started. But because of, you know, Abraham loved God. He, I mean, he wanted to leave. He wanted to help God quite all right. But I, I, I can tell that Abraham is as God deliver me. What did I put myself in? I'm in a compromising situation. I'm in the world, oh God, but I'm not of the world. Look at where I find myself, oh God. I'm a man of unclean lips, oh God, because I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And Abraham is saying, oh God, deliver me. Somebody's going to ask God to deliver him and her today in the name of Jesus Christ. And God had Abraham and began to, you know, judge and began to rebuke the enemy. Rebuke, you know, the king that took his wife. But one thing is very evident. When he was leaving Egypt, there was so much substance. When he was leaving Egypt, even Lot, the nephew of Abraham, had so much substance. And after, you see, God raised, increased uh, Abraham, increased Lot to the extent that the land was not even enough for them, you know, for their cattle and for their belongings. And they got to a point and said, we need to actually you know, choose where you want to be. And a lot, of course, chose Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was trouble there again. And uh, Abraham said, you, you go this way and I'll go this way. And uh, because the blessings were so much, I pray this year the Lord will increase you. He will increase you. He will enlarge your course. He will enlarge your course in the name of Jesus. We're talking about giving to God. It is when there's no money that complains and murmurings uh, and death. when resources are scarce and limited. And uh, look at the apostolic uh, times. And you saw there were some of those, you know, wranglings and all those things because of scarce resources. And do you know at times, uh, as even Christians and ministers, do you know at times that we limit ourselves to the small space that we have? We must not this year limit ourselves to the four walls of this church. There's enough space in the atmosphere for every bird to fly the sea. There's enough space in the atmosphere. Look at Washington, D.C. and the souls of men littered there. You, I challenge you this year, minister of God, go out there and cast demons out of people. Go out there and cast the devil out of people. I challenge you this year, go out there and lay your hands on the sick and cause them to recover. Let's not strive over the pulpit. Let's not strive over the microphone. When Philip realized that, the Holy Ghost moved Philip. Oh my God, Philip full of the Holy Ghost was serving table. But when Philip, when his life began to break forth, signs and wonders followed him. Signs and wonders will follow somebody here today in the mighty name of Jesus. It is when we limit ourselves that we get limited. This year we declare there will be no limitation for us. I said this year there will be no lack for us. I said this year there will be no loss for us in the name of Jesus. 
I repeat that as they say, there's enough space for every bird to fly. The environment, the people, the souls of men are so many. The field is right for harvest. House caring fellowship leader, you are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You are a worker in this church. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe. Stop waiting for your pastor. Your pastor is not a fire brigade. Your fire pastor is not a policeman. He is not 911. Stop waiting on your pastor. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings and eagles. Elijah appeared at a time when there was idolatry in the land. I, he just showed up in the scene. Creation waits for the manifestations of the children of righteousness. They may not know your father's name. They may not know your family. They may be thinking about you. When you show up, things will begin to happen. This year, things will happen. For this church, this year, things will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. God is calling us to exhibit personal, everybody say personal, obedience. It's one-on-one -on -one with God. I mean Jesus and I. Me and God. You don't need the multitude to turn the world around. Look at Paul. Look at when persecution arose. They were everywhere declaring the, full, the whole counsel of God. And everywhere experienced the people around the, the Greek, uh, of course the Hebrews, experienced the mighty power of God through them. This obedience we're talking about is a prompt obedience. Everybody say prompt obedience. When God called Abraham, he, was, he did not dilly dial. When God called Abraham, he said, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, let me check my bank account. Wait a minute, let me see whether I have, oh, no, let's send them two by two. Jesus sent them out two by two. He said, forget about your wallet. Forget about what? He told him, forget about your purse and your wallet. Just go out. No wonder when they returned back. When they returned back, they said, ah, we saw the devil was subject unto us. They didn't know they had the potential until they went out. You will go out this year. God has made you a miracle worker. Young man, young woman, at your school, somebody is sick. Exercise your faith and take authority. Take authority. At your place of work, you see things are not in order. Exercise your faith and do what? Take authority. It's when you don't take authority over the devil. The devil thinks he's a champion. <laughs> if you don't take authority over Pharaoh... The people of God will not be let go. He said, God said, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people what? Simple instruction. Go and do what? Tell Pharaoh. Whatever is like Pharaoh in your life, you will tell that situation, let God's people go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Moses was engrossed in what God said. If he was walking by sight, the magicians would scare him. <laughs> you know, the magicians would scare him. But the rod of Moses, God has given you something that the world has never seen before. The rod of Moses. Ever say the rod of Moses? It is because of the presence of God in Moses and in that rod that the rod of Moses, that rod swallowed up the rod of the magicians. You go and exercise faith and the power of God. All the sorcering houses, all the magical houses, all the occultic houses, they say they are called the, the church of Satan. And today when we pray, we will shut them down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Many years ago, I looked at a radio station professing vanity, corruption. I say, I shut you down in the name of Jesus. Not too long after that, I saw that the radio station folded up. I dare not tell anybody. I said, Wait. Oh my, my, my God. This God answers by fire. This God is a prayer answering God. I care less about the prophets of Baal. You call down God. Prepare the altar. Prepare it. They should do all they want to do. When God comes down, he will magnify you before the people. 
I say he will magnify you before the people in the name of Jesus. Why do we call ourselves a church, a city set on a hill? And within the circumference of this place, our hospitals filled with sick and people with incurable sickness. We will pray this year until our light breaks forth. Until the move of God begins to enter every hospital room, delivering people of infirmities, causing the sick to become restored, causing the lame to walk. We will pray this year till every prostitution house is depleted. There's somewhere they call Dupont Circle in D.C. You go there, you better stand tall and stand strong. You go there as a man, before you know it, uh, in fact, one day I was driving and uh, going to Union Station. I slowed down for a moment. I wonder why I slowed down. All of a sudden, I see something like this. Ah, is this a woman? No, it's a man. It's a man. Soliciting for service, for business. I pray that every such institution promoting such things in this country will shut down this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Elijah did not need companions. Like the Hebrew children had companions. Elijah stood alone. He, but he stood with God. No wonder they say God, one with God is with the majority. The Lord is with you. Even unto the ends of the world. Do you know God is with you? He's with us. Our light will break forth this year. In the name of Jesus, this obedience is a perpetual obedience through life. A perpetual obedience. Our prayer this says, God, even if others are backsliding, even if others are getting weak, oh God, I am not going to get tired. I'm not going to, Lord, get weak. I will renew my strength day after day in the mighty name of Jesus. Lastly, before we pray, I just want to just talk about trustingly walking with God. A key to spectacular life in a contemporary world. Trustingly walking with God. The key to spectacular life. A spectacular life in a contemporary world. Exodus 24 verse 7 says, And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said, we will do. And be obedient. Job Said Job 36 11 says, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. You know, Jeremiah put it this way Jeremiah, that was actually Job 36 verse 11. And Jeremiah said in chapter 7 verse 23, But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. And Peter said, in First Peter 1, 14, that as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust, as is in the world, in your ignorance, but the transforming truth about walking with God in obedience is that he will cause our light to shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He said, if you and I be willing and obedient, we will eat the fruit of the land. Brent, do you know that if you and I will truly be obedient unto God and walk with God, in, of course, in obedience, it will cause our light to shine. It will entail that, or ensure and entail that we remain converted. Walking with God in obedience will ensure that you remain converted and you remain in the faith. It will ensure that you remain consecrated. Walking with God by faith will ensure that you remain connected with God. Walking with God by faith will ensure that you stay always connected with heaven and the power of God like Moses was connected with God, Joshua was connected with God, Daniel was connected with God. Do you know walking with God will entail and ensure that you remain a conqueror 
a conqueror. It will ensure that you remain uncompromising. It will ensure and that you remain unconquerable. Whether it's in the dream or in the physical, you will be unconquerable in the name of Jesus Christ. It will ensure and entail that you are uncommon. Uncommon in soul winning, uncommon in service, uncommon in your lifestyle. People will come to you and ask you, why do you dress this way? Why, why, why are you dressing this way? Why are you so different? And be quick to tell them that you are a child of God. Others may be dressing the way they like. Others may be stripping themselves naked. Others may be talking uh, in a, you know, sinfully. Make sure that you are different. This year you'll be different. You can't change the world if you are like them. The, and that's why God said, I've called you to be separate. If you are going to be an agent of change, if you are going to be a vessel in the hand of God, an act in the hand of a living God, to hewn down the kingdom of darkness. If you are going to bring joy and smiles into the lives of people out there, you have to have a lifelong commitment to trust, of trust to God, of trusting God. A lifelong commitment of walking with God. Commit yourself. Say, God, I will walk with you for through this entire year. All the days of this year, all the hours of this year, Lord, every moment of this year, I will walk with you. I pray that you will walk with God in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we pray, you know, this great man of God put it this way. Actually, it's poor John. He said, the Spirit calls men to Jesus in diverse ways. Some are drawn so gently that they scarcely know when, they are, when the drawing began. And others are so suddenly affected that their conversion stands out with noonday clearness. He said, perhaps no two conversions are precisely alike in details or modes or manifestations. All vary greatly. As our minds are not all cast in the same mold, it may so happen that the truth that affects one is powerless upon another. The style of, ad of address that influences your friend may be offensive to yourself. The wind blows where it will, yet in all true conversions, there are points of essential agreement. There must be in all a penitent confession of sin and a looking to Jesus for the forgiveness of it. There must also be real change of heart, such as shall affect the entire life hereafter. Where there's essential points, or where these essential points are not found, there is no genuine conversion. Where there is true faith, there is new birth. And where there's true faith, it implies that there's going to be a change beyond measure. Complete change. A radical change. Any man who is united to Christ has experienced a great change. This change is a thorough and a sweeping one. And operates upon the nature and the heart. And life of the convert. There must be a divine work making us new creatures and causing all things to become new with us. Or we shall die in our sins. Our condition before God, our moral tone, our nature, our state of mind are made by conversion, of course, totally different from what they were before. In the word, he said, if we are in Christ Jesus, we are new creatures. All things are passed away. Behold, everybody say, behold. All things are become new. All things are become new. In your life, all things are become new. In your life, all things will become new. This year, all things will become new for you. You will not go down to Egypt for help. You will not go down to the world asking for help. All things will become new for you and your family this year in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet and take this to the Lord in prayer. Rise up on your feet and say, God, this year, my declaration is that all things will become new. All things will become new. Is that your declaration here today? That's my own declaration here today. All things will become new in my life, 
in my family, all things will become new because I've experienced the power of God, the saving grace of God. All things will become new. There will be no staleness in my life. There will be no backwardness in my life. There will be no mediocrity in my life. There will be no lukewarmness in my life. All things will become new. Why not open your mouth and declare that here today? All things will become new for me this year. All in my devotion with God, all things will become new. In my commitment with heaven, all things will become new. In my God said, who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Ah, I'm ready oh God this year to be sent. To the regions beyond oh God, all things will become new. For creation awaits the manifestation of the children of righteousness. All things will become new oh God. Lord in my life, all things will become I'm new, oh God. In my school, can God count on you to bring about a change in your college? Can God count on you to bring about a change in your high school? Can God count on you to bring about a change in your place of work? All things will become new this year, oh God. God will count, he's counting on you for a change in your family. All things will become new, oh God. But then you must take authority. But then you must size up. But then you must step up. Moses did not remain at the place where he encountered God. He went down to Egypt and the host of darkness showed up. They will gather. They will gather but not by God. They will surely gather. If I tell you they will not gather, it is not true. The scripture said they will gather but not by God. God will lift up a standard of righteousness. This year, as God launches, God will launch you. God will launch you to the region beyond. God will launch you in your community. Yeah, but you've been living in that community for so long. They never knew you. I don't know where Elijah came from. He just showed up into the scene. He may be in the period of incubation. Maybe you are in the face of incubation. Maybe you are in the face where God is working on you right now. Maybe you're in the face where God and the maker of your life is molding you. You are coming from that pit, the pit of sin, and God is molding you into righteous being and you're coming from that rock he's hewing you that rock is my rock the rock of my salvation yeah god is launching somebody here this year god is launching somebody here this year say god is launching me this year God, you are launching me this year. As God launched Elijah, he is launching somebody this year. Jezebel must not have an upper hand in the country. Jezebel must not have an upper hand in the land. Jezebel could control Ahab, control king, control prophets, and prophets of God are running for their life. I will not be under Jezebel. I will not be subject to Jezebel. Therefore, I take authority authority. Now begin to take authority. 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 In the name of Jesus, say, I take authority over the kingdom of darkness because I have been launched by God. I will launch my God. I will walk into where things are happening. I will make things. I will turn things around. Take authority. Take authority. Take authority. Take authority. Take authority. The world will not know you unless you take authority. Unless you take authority. The authority that God has given to you, you exercise it. The Lord said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You drink deadly things, it will not hurt you. You lay your hands on the sick, it, they will recover. This is our year of signs and wonders. Our year of supernatural breakthrough. Our year of breaking and launching out. Your light is breaking forth. Your light is breaking forth. Like the noonday, your life is breaking forth. In the name of Jesus, others may be drawing back. My life is breaking forth. Others may say there's a casting down, but for me there's a lifting up. Because my economy, ah, power has changed hands in my life. My economy is the economy of heaven. There's a lifting up for me. Others may complain when they say give, but I will trust in God. 
I will walk with God. I will be a giver. In Jesus' name we pray. No time will not permit me to, to read. You go, you go back, you read everything God has said about you. He said you will lend to many nations. He said you will lend. To, you, will be, you will be above only and not beneath. You will be the head and not the tail. How come you are still there in your class? The lower percentile, you are there. 25% on the filling side, you are one of those. I reject that. Others are eating from hand to mouth. You're one of them. I reject that. We're going to pray the prayer like our pastor prayed last Thursday. You're going to be open your mouth and begin to say no, no, no. No to anything in your life that is not of God. No to any circumstance around you that is not of God. No, no, no. Open your mouth and begin to use that word no. No to the king of Persia resisting my prayer. No to... Hey, 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 listen, listen. I, I, I hope we understand what the prayer is. When, Herod, when Pharaoh resisted Moses... If Moses stopped at the first plague, nothing gets done. If he stops at the second plague. So at times you wonder why we repeat, we repeat prayers. It's for emphasis. It's to, to, for you to build your faith. It's to build the resistance that you need. Perspiration. Perseverance. The effect, Bible said the effectual fervent. I don't know. Do you know what the, the word fervent means? Do you know what the word effectual means? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Maybe he prayed once, it didn't happen. The effectual fervent, fervent, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. You know, you're praying, the prayer is availing. You're praying, it's availing. You're praying, it's availing. You're pushing until something happens. You're pushing until supernatural breakthrough happens. Open your mouth and tell God, no to every circumstance around me that is not of God. No to everything in my life. No to anything in my children that is not of God. No, no, no. You talked about month of prayer and fasting. That that's why everything is about that this month. Say no, no, no. No to Pharaoh. Let the people of God go free. No to the prince of Pesha. The answer must come. The good news must come from heaven. The answer, the fruitfulness must come. There shall be showers of blessings. There shall be showers of blessings, church. There shall be showers of blessings. There shall be. Showers of blessings. There will be showers of blessings until righteousness springs forth in our children. We say no to the kingdom of darkness until the hospitals around us are depleted of patients and the kingdom of God is populated. We say no to death. We say no to sickness. We say no to incurable sicknesses around us in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you saying no? Are you saying no? Are you saying no to your condition? Are you saying no? Are you saying no? No, no, Pharaoh, no, Pharaoh. God said, let my people go. No, Pharaoh, no, Pharaoh. You and your magicians are wicked. No, Pharaoh. God's people must be delivered. No, Pharaoh. No, Pharaoh. No, Pharaoh. But then God has liberated the people of God. They are on their way to Canaan land. Who told you the enemy will not pursue you? They will gather. But God will part your Red Sea. The enemy that pursues you and refuses to give up. Hey, in the name of Jesus, every adversary, you'll be drunk with your own blood. I'm talking about adversary of the gospel. The adversary of our children. In the name of Jesus, every institution of wickedness in this land. Say no to them, no to them, no to them, no to them. Every institution of godlessness. Now begin to say no to them, no to them. Begin to close them up. Close them up, close them up. Every institution of wickedness in this country. Close them up. Entertainment industries that don't mean righteousness. Close them up, close them up. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, is it the prayer of people that are closing up institutions? Elijah said there shall be no rain. They will look for you and say, hey, please come and ask God to bring rain. I say, every institution of wickedness, in Jesus' name we pray. There's a church called the Church of Satan. Today we're going to pass a decree. I said, today we're going to pass a decree. 
Today we're going to pass a decree. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Are you ready, church? Are you ready, the people of God? Now close that institution. Close down the church of Satan right now. Church of Satan, I command you, shut down. I command you, shut down. Church of Satan, church, we know of church of the living God. Until the real people manifest the glory of God, the kingdom of darkness will, the devil will act like the world belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's. The souls of men is the Lord. The souls of the youths of America is the Lord. The politicians of America belong to God. The people in the place of authority belongs to God. No to the church of Satan. I pass the decree right now. Terminate. I shut you down. In the name of Jesus. Now you're going to say no to institutions of godlessness every institution of godlessness antichrist institution we are still in the world yes iniquity shall abound but and the love of many works but as long as we're still in the world they cannot overwhelm us i shut them down i shut them down shut them down shut them down what else are you shutting down there are many are you tired? Are you tired? Are you tired? Are you shutting them down? Are you shutting them down? Shut them down. Think about them. Shut them down. Think about them. As you are thinking, as the Holy Ghost is bringing them to light, shut them down. As the Holy Spirit is bringing them to light, shut them down. Shut them down. In your neighborhood, shut them down. Shut them down. In the name of Jesus, as God is bringing them to light, shut them down. Shut them down. Are you shutting them? Are you tired of shutting them down? Pass the decree. Pass the decree. Pass the decree. Pass the decree. Shut them down. Every radio station not of God, shut down. Every anti-institution to the power, to the righteousness of God, be shut down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said a mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now you're going to reverse every decree of Nebuchadnezzar against the people of God. We reverse. We reverse. Open your mouth and reverse every decree. Every decree of the enemy decree of the kingdom of darkness passed against the church of a living God. We reverse them. We reverse them. We reverse them in the mighty name of Jesus. We reverse them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every decree that is not of God, we reverse in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Ephesians 6, 10, of verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we're going to tell God, every wiles of the devil that has shielded 
the entire populace, children, men, women, like an invisible barrier. And when you're preaching to them, they, there's no connection with God. There's no connection with God. They know more of Satan and know more of the, the devil than even God. We're going to tell God every wiles of Satan that has shielded the people. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Clear them out in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and begin to clear them up. Clear them up. Clear them up. Clear them up. Every wiles of Satan be cleared up. Every spell of the kingdom of darkness. Yeah, that's how the church grows. Until you prevail, the church is not going to grow. Until you exercise authority, the church is not going to grow. Don't be in a hurry to rush out. Don't be in a hurry to dash out and go start preaching. Clear the ground. Every wiles of Satan. Bible said everywhere, wherever the sole of our feet shall tread upon, we possess. Washington, D.C. for Christ declare. Maryland for Christ declare. Virginia for Christ declare. Our region for Christ declare. John the Baptist said, This is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent, repent. Why can't they hear our voice? Why are the dumb spirit begin to cast every dumb spirit? Every spirit of dumbness. People can't hear the voice of God. We bind every dumb spirit. Definitely the ears of people. We bind in the name of Jesus. Let ears be opened. Let deafness be removed. Let blindness be taken away. This church must grow. This church must increase. We will increase this year. I will increase this year. In your neighborhood, you increase this year. Your children will increase this year. Because you are for signs and wonders. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Marriage was instituted by God. But today, the demons are fighting that institution. Ha, ha, ha. We're going to tell God every arrow of the enemy against the institution that God created for our good. He said be fruitful and multiply. How will there be multiplication and fruitfulness if men marry men, women marry women? Every institution supporting that institute, supporting this heresy, supporting this abomination, you're going to open your mouth and declare and say, every institution that is against the institution of marriage, that our children cannot even tell the difference anymore. We don't tell God, Father, right now, we command, search, remove. Open your mouth and pray. 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 Institutions of hatred. Institutions, oh God, of anti the institution of God. Every institution that Lord destroys, seeks to destroy what God put in place. We destroy them in the name of Jesus. We destroy them. Promoting divorce. Promoting separation. Promoting hatred between men and women. In the name of Jesus, be destroyed. If you understand what that means, you will pray seriously. The effectual of father and prayer, our righteous have availed much. You will live a better world for your children. It's not by power. It's not by mind. By my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power. It's not by mind. By my spirit, Says the Lord. Let's confirm it. Let's confirm it today. This mountain has been removed. This mountain has been removed. Sing it like you mean it. Confirmation. Confirmation here. Confirmation here. Confirmation. Confirmation. By faith. By my spirit, says the... Sing it like you believe that the Lord has answered your prayer. This mountain. 
This mountain has been removed, has been removed. This mountain has been removed in Jesus' name. This mountain has been removed by my spirit says the Lord. This mountain has been removed by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain has been removed. I see it crumbling down. This mountain has been removed in Jesus' name. This mountain has been removed by His power. By my spirit, receives the Lord. One more time. This mountain has been removed. This mountain has been removed out. This mountain has been removed in Jesus' name. This mountain has been removed. By the Holy Spirit, by my spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We thank you, Lord, because there will be showers of blessings. Messy drops around us are falling, but for the showers, we plead. Showers of blessings upon our church, upon every family here, upon every boy, every girl, every man, every woman. Showers of blessings. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for the showers of blessings. We thank you because all things are passed away. And all things in our life and around us are becoming new. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. Lord, as your people return back to their homes, Father, renew their strength. They are waiting on you. Spend so much time. Some walked. Clearing the snow for others to come in. Surely, O oh God, there's need for an infilling. Refill their strength, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Father, we pray that everyone here be renewed in the name of Jesus Christ. So they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will be, oh God, eagles, and they mount up with wings as eagles in the name of Jesus Christ. No crawling this year. No backwardness this year. No retrogression this year. Forward ever, backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say congratulations. Make sure you're congratulating someone. Say congratulations for what? Your breakthrough has come. Congratulate them. Congratulate them. All things have passed away. All things have become. Congratulate them. Abundance of blessings. Congratulations. All is well with you. Congratulations. It's a new year indeed. Congratulations. Open doors for you. Congratulations. The joy of the Lord in your life. Amen. 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 And congratulations to all our prayer who are watching. 
my satellite. We congratulate all of you at, in your homes. Congratulations to all of you in your homes. Because the blessings of the Lord will catch up with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to share the grace in fellowship. Uh, but I do want us, to, uh, I want to announce that uh, our brain, if you live in the Wardoff area, in Wardoff area, uh, Clinton Ward of that whole area. Please wait behind after the service to meet with our pastor. Pastor, myself and Pastor Obina will be at the left-hand side of, uh, of the, the sanctuary, my left. So please make sure you come forward. We'll meet with you if you're in the Ward of area. It will not take time. It's going to be a few minutes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I just want to encourage you that you be a faithful giver this year. You know, we don't go over announcements all the time, reminding us of our pledges and vows. We talked about Project 2019, 